Now, Lenshina, first fact, she actually did found the Lumpa Church. Lumpa, which meant superior to the rest, obviously posed a threat. If you name a church superior to the rest, you are definitely going to pose a threat. Now, in the 1950s, there were two churches present in Zambia or Northern Rhodesia as we knew it to be. The Roman Catholic Church and the Church of Scotland, under which David Kaunda, the father to our first president, Kenneth Kaunda, was a missionary. And this obviously gives Kenneth Kaunda a bias towards anyone else who starts a church, especially one who calls their church superior to the All right, so Galaya Solutions Limited, our one of our very first sponsors on this show. Uh, they have secured our premises um, from the CCTV cameras to the access control, uh, the alarm systems. One of my favorite of their products being this one. It's an alarm. It contains a motion sensor so you can set it either today or night quite loud, easy to use, portable, and quite affordable. I highly recommend it. So Galaya Solutions have a social media presence. Uh, you can search for them on either Facebook or Instagram. Their numbers are there. Give them a call. Get yourself an alarm, secure yourself. Enjoy the show. Come rain, come sunshine. Switch my heart and do you will find. It's love for you. All I got is love for you. Oh yeah, yeah, there's no lie I will hold you Come over, forever be my lover Woman in the sun All right, you're welcome to Amazing Minds today. We'll be giving you our first rebuttal on Lenshina, or as some of you may know her, Alice Mulenga, the famous and famous founder of the Lumpa Church. I'll give you four facts and a few questions. Now, before we get into all that, I know many people have done their own versions of uh, rebuttals, myth busting, dissecting the story of Lenshina, which is basically what I'll be doing today. And um, in order to grow the channel and have better content, please subscribe, hit the notification bell and share. Let's get into it. Now, Lenshina, first fact, she actually did found the Lumpa Church. Lumpa, which meant superior to the rest, obviously posed a threat. If you name a church superior to the rest, you are definitely going to pose a threat. Now, in the 1950s, there were two churches present in Zambia or Northern Rhodesia as we knew it to be. The Roman Catholic Church and the Church of Scotland, under which David Kaunda, the father to our first president, Kenneth Kaunda, was a missionary. And this obviously gives Kenneth Kaunda a bias towards anyone else who starts a church, especially one who calls their church superior to the rest. Second fact, she actually did believe in Jesus Christ. Now, Lenshina was said to have been sick of cerebral malaria, you know, the kind that makes you go. Run. which is beside the point, it's supposed that she died. And during her death, she claimed to have met Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave her a threefold assignment in a nutshell, which is to eradicate witchcraft, to eradicate alcoholism, and to eradicate what may be your man's favorite, polygamy. These things still relate to what we believe Christianity to be today. She had the same message that most Christians would have today. And so this brings me to believing that she actually did believe in Jesus Christ, even though she did not submit to government authority, which is in direct opposition to what the Bible says. I believe that not every mistake someone makes determines whether they're true or false. Third fact, she played no significant role in the political activities of the church. As a matter of fact, it's recorded that she regretted the political side of her church because it diluted the spiritual impact of her message. She just didn't want people to marry multiple people. Which brings me to my next point. Lenshina spent a collective total of about 10 years behind bars. Let me not say behind bars, let me say in detention because for some parts she was behind bars and for some parts she was under house arrest. She actually died 
under house arrest in Chilenje. Now, um, not so easy to start a riot from behind bars. <laughs> she did not necessarily play a significant role. Now, the thing is, when you start any organization, call it superior to the rest, and tell people not to submit to the government of the day, what happens is there will automatically form those few individuals that are just going to take it to the extremes. And I think this was the case um, for Len Shena. Um, now, given the fact that he was a young, new, vibrant, excited and insecure leader, we know where Zambia's history is coming from. I think it's a bit reasonable to understand why he would be a bit opposed to a church that does not submit to government. And being Africa, the best way we know how to deal with anyone who opposes us is to detain them. Your Excellency, this is a surprise. Welcome. What do you mean we have no money? I need at least one million dollars for intelligence mission immediately. I told you on the telephone that I need this money urgently. Your Excellency, as I told you already also, we're bankrupt. We're simply out of foreign currency. Well, print more. Your Excellency, it's not quite that simple. We cannot print foreign currency. I'm having a lot of difficulties these days in persuading our foreign suppliers to accept late payments. The Uganda shilling is worthless today in the foreign market. In fact, worthless than toilet paper. Toilet paper? You call Uganda money shit money? Take governor here outside and show him what we do to shit. Imperialists will not run Uganda's banks. Yes, sir. And Kaunda played right into the book of every African leader, at least those of their time. So, which will bring me to my second question. Kaunda, friend, or four? I'll leave that for you to decide. As for me, Lenshina, 